What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today we're going to be diving into the Dragonborn DLC, uncovering some of Hermaeus Mora's most treasured artifacts, the Black Books. During your adventures in Soul Slime, you can read these books to transport yourself to a place known as Apocrypha, which as you probably know, is Mora's Daedric Realm. The Black Books give the user great powers if they are able to handle the challenges within. Most people who try to read these otherworldly tomes simply go insane, but as a Dragonborn, we're far more powerful than that, aren't we? That said, the artifacts are created to lure mortals into the service of Hermaeus Mora, so let's still be careful. The Black Books are filled with hidden knowledge, some of which comes from ancient times in the past, but very interestingly, some of it even comes from far into the future. While playing Skyrim, you must traverse a region of Apocrypha to unlock the power or ability within, and once you do, you realize that you actually have decisions to make. You see, each Black Book gives you the option of choosing one of multiple powers or effects. In this video, I'd love to talk about what these are and which ones I find to be the best. It's a bit like a classic fudge muppet, is it worth it video. There are seven black books to go through and the first one I'll start with is an easy one to get out of the way because it's actually the exception to the rule. The black book known as Waking Dreams simply gives you the ability to remove all of your perks from a perk tree, allowing you to reallocate them again. It only costs you one dragon soul per skill tree that you want to take the perks back from, so it's definitely worth using in my opinion. There's very very little opportunity cost, and if you ever want to perfect your character's perk choices or change your playstyle entirely, then this is the best way to do it. But let's move on from this and get to the six other books which actually give you a few powers or effects to choose from. Let's kick things off with a black book known as Epistolary Acumen. After conquering the zone of Apocrypha within this book, you actually find yourself choosing between three active effects that affect your dragon shouts. You've got Dragonborn Force, which alters your unrelenting force shout. You've got Dragonborn Flame, which changes your fire breath shout, and then there's Dragonborn Frost, which modifies your frost breath shout. So Dragonborn Force. This makes your unrelenting force shout do more damage, and says it may disintegrate enemies too. From my experimentation and use, it seems that the disintegration isn't just a random chance based thing, but rather it only happens when you kill an enemy with your unrelenting force shout. The other thing to realize is that the damage added isn't super high or anything, but it is noticeable enough for me to see that the shout is more useful because of it. The reason I like this effect, besides the disintegration being really cool, is simply that unrelenting force is a shout that people tend to use quite often. It's a very staple shout, and having it do some extra damage can really help you wear your enemies down if you open combat up with a Fusro Da. The effect is obviously nothing special, but to be honest, the other two effects aren't massive game changes either. Then we have Dragonborn Flame. When your Fire Breath shout kills an enemy, a Fire Worm emerges from their corpse to fight for you for 60 seconds. This is pretty much like an Ice Wraith with an orangey fire color to it. There's some pros and cons to this one. The con is that the AI is pretty bad, and it tends to just stay around the area it spawns. This means it won't go off and hunt down enemies for you, and it won't follow you to your next fight. The worm simply spawns where the enemy was killed and hangs around that area, attacking enemies who get too close. The pros to this is that it works really well to draw attention away from you in battle, creating a distraction in the same way a conjured creature does. It also has 316 health points, so it can take a beating for you as it dishes out some small but useful damage against your foes in the process. What I really love about this power is that if you kill multiple enemies with your fire breath shout, you will gain multiple fire worms. So if you're ever in a situation where you're fighting a horde of enemies, you might finish two of them off with the fire breath shout, and then you'll have two fire worms fighting alongside you in the immediate area against the remaining three targets. Something else to note is that as long as the enemy is taking the fire damage from your shout when they die, the worm should spawn. So if you hit an enemy with the shout and they're almost dying, but then a stray arrow quickly hit them in the last moment as they're still taking fire damage, you should still gain your fiery friend. And finally, from Epistolary Acumen, we have Dragonborn Frost. This modifies your Frost Breath Shout to actually encase your opponents in ice. Now this is arguably the best power out of these for a lot of players, but why? Well, as you would know, Fire and Frost Breath Shouts do a solid amount of damage once you unlock all three words. Well, with the Dragonborn Frost effect, you'll be able to unleash this damage while basically mixing it with the Ice Form Shout. Why bother with the Ice Form Shout when you can just use Frost Breath on an enemy instead, which actually does significantly more damage and has a much shorter cooldown time. The only drawback is that it doesn't freeze enemies for as long as Ice Form, but who really needs to have enemies frozen for extended periods of time anyway? The 
other advantage is that unlike ice form, enemies won't just break free from the ice if you strike it, so you get the benefits of frost breath damage while also freezing enemies like ice form, but they also won't break free as easily and you'll usually still have enough time to go around and kill them all. All in all with this book, I'd say choose the effect that's based on the shout which you use the most. Obviously it's hard to say which one is the best, as they all have their different uses, but I would definitely say that I think the frost one takes the prize here, simply for allowing you to, in essence, fuse the frost breath shout with the ice form shout to get features of both, extra benefits and only a minor drawback. I'd say the dragonborn flame power is the coolest looking one and like I said it's fun to have a distraction for enemies. Dragonborn force is a solid staple but it doesn't really do much for me. I often still pick it though because I use unrelenting force so much more frequently than the other shouts so definitely take that into account. Now let's move on to the next black book in this video, Filament and Filigree. After completing it this one offers you the choice between three powers which you can actually activate once per day, as opposed to three active effects. Your choices are the Secret of Strength, the Secret of Arcana, and the Secret of Protection. The Secret of Protection can be activated to take half as much damage for 30 seconds, and the Secret of Strength can be used to make power attacks cost no stamina for 30 seconds. The Secret of Arcana can be unleashed to let you cast spells at no magicka cost for 30 seconds. So which one of these should you use, and is there a best one? Well, they definitely all have their uses. Being able to power attack non-stop for 30 seconds is going to be great for any high DPS warrior characters. Being able to cast unlimited magic for 30 seconds is great for mage characters, and taking half as much damage for 30 seconds is great for any build character, except I guess are not as good for stealthy builds who try to avoid taking damage altogether. So in terms of explaining their use and ranking them, I would say that simply based on usability, the secret of protection is probably the best one. Pretty much every character can make use of taking half as much damage for 30 seconds. It's a huge advantage in a fight. It's like having half the benefits of the Berserker Rage racial power, but for any character. It is kind of boring though boring but effective for everyone. I would rank the Secret of Arcana, which lets you cast spells for no cost for 30 seconds, the second best of the three. Main reason here is that being able to cast unlimited spells is really powerful. Think of the Master Shock Magic Destruction spell. Letting loose things like that at no cost is really powerful. The other advantage is that even if you're a shit mage or not a mage at all and purchase a powerful spell tome, you could actually unleash powerful spells when you're not a mage. You could use a strategy as a pure warrior where you actually buy some spell tomes to use in emergencies. Imagine once a day being able to let loose fireballs, frenzy spells and invisibility spells as a pure melee build who's never been interested in magic in their whole life simply because you've got this power. There's some pretty fun applications outside of just making a mage character even better. And finally I rank it second just because I have to rank the secret of strength which is the unlimited power attacks for 30 seconds one last. The reason I rank it last is because characters who use melee weapons and benefit from power attacking often usually have high enough stamina to let loose enough power attacks anyway and your standard melee attacks tend to kill opponents in Skyrim fast enough. The other reason is because you only need a smidge of stamina to let loose a power attack and you can actually use an exploit, well it's not really an exploit, but basically using vegetable soup. This food item can be eaten to restore one point of stamina per second for 720 seconds. Now that may not sound like a lot, it also restores one point of health per second for 700 120 seconds. The stamina is the main significant factor here though, as it basically allows you to do a power attack every second. As like I said, you don't need lots of stamina to power attack, you just need to not have zero stamina. So there you have it folks, I must say the powers from this book were pretty simple, but what's next? Well the fourth black book we'll dive into today, if we include Waking Dreams as the first one, is called The Hidden Twilight. After delving through Apocrypha and getting the chance to pick your powers, you're offered some pretty sensational options. There's more as Agony, Mora's Boon, and Mora's Grasp. You truly are harnessing the power of Hermaeus Mora himself with this one. All of the powers here are pretty good, but let's start with the one I think is technically the best, but like the last book, it's the most boring one. Mora's Boon is a power you can use once per day to fully restore your health, magicka, and stamina. While this is what the description says, it seems that it actually just restores 1,000 points of each of your stats. So in theory, if you had a really high level character with over a thousand in a stat, technically it wouldn't restore 
for your entire pool. That said, it pretty much always does, and even still, a thousand points being restored in every stat is super useful. You pretty much get to cheat death as any build, and as a warrior, you get to cheat death while also dishing out an entirely restored stamina bar worth of bashes and power attacks. As a mage, you get to cheat death while also getting to dish out spells from a fully restored magicka bar. It doesn't take a genius to realize why this is so powerful. It revolves around the same contingency strategy we use here at Fudge Muppet, where we save a level up until we're about to die and then use it, restoring all of our stats, and obviously in that case, letting us increase one of them too. With the boring power aside, just how good is Mora's Agony? Well, once per day, this lets us summon a field of writhing tentacles, which poisons foes. It does a really good job at wearing enemies down in a solid area, and it looks incredibly cool too, with the enemies it affects also getting ravaged by the tentacles. The great thing about this power is that it is perfect for crowd control, and seems to stagger enemies very frequently. If you're in a tight spot, you can just throw these tentacles down and watch your opponent become blocked. They won't be able to reach you as every time they run into the tentacles, they'll stagger backwards while also taking damage. It lasts for a full 30 seconds and can definitely turn the tide in an otherwise difficult battle. Do not underestimate this power. Now, while I quite like it, I still have to rank it second from this book as Mora's Boon is still so OP. But what about the final power, Mora's Grasp? Well, I actually rank it last in terms of how good it is simply because you don't really use it that often. It's not as usable and helpful as the other powers. What it does is freeze a target between Oblivion and Tamriel for 30 seconds, making them immune to all damage. This isn't the kind of power you're going to get ridiculous amounts of use from, but like the other powers, it still has its applications. The main application is crowd control. When you get into a battle with multiple opponents, you can use Mora's Grasp to single out the most powerful one, trapping them in stasis while you take out the other enemies, leaving the toughest one without any backup when you finally get around to fighting them. Personally, I would prefer a spell like Paralyze or Ash Shell to trap my opponents. However, not all characters use Alteration, so this can be great for other classes who don't use magic at all. Another cool application of this power, which you'll hardly ever use, but sometimes it makes sense to do it, is actually using it on a companion. While it takes the companion out of the fight, it also stops them from getting wrecked by any enemies who are just way too strong for them. For 30 seconds, your companion will be trapped between Oblivion and Tamriel, potentially saved from fatal damage, which was about to occur on the mortal plane. Again, you'll usually just use this on one enemy when faced with a group to battle, but personally, I'd just rather put a field of tentacles in their way or fight them normally and then just refill all of my stats when I'm about to die via Mora's Boon. Next up on our list, we've got the black book known as the Sallow Regent. After opening this tome and navigating your way to the end of this part of Mora's Realm, you'll be able to choose from three different active effects. They're called Seeker of Might, Seeker of Sorcery, and Seeker of Shadows. In a nutshell, these powers correspond with the three different skill types and improve each skill within the corresponding type by 10%. So Seeker of Might makes combat skills 10% more effective, including smithing. Seeker of Sorcery makes all spells cost 10% less to cast and also makes enchantments 10% stronger. Keep in mind that the magicka cost reduction of spells is applied after any fortified magic school enchantments you have on your gear. Seeker of Shadows makes all stealth thief skills 10% more effective, including alchemy. When it comes to this book, it's pretty hard to rank which effect is the best best, because it really just comes down to what skills you actually use. Simply pick the effect that is going to improve most of your skills, or at least your most important skills by 10%. One thing I will say though is that if I had to rank them, I would actually say that Seeker of Sorcery is the best, because there's very few ways to really improve your enchanting powers in Skyrim. Even if you choose it temporarily, I strongly recommend getting this effect for your character before you enchant your endgame gear, if you are going to do so at all. It really makes a huge difference. These effects are decent to get for any build, it's really a case of why not just get it. Every bit of increase helps, especially 10% to everything. Though as Drew said in one of our Skyrim Twitch streams, you go through a realm of a Daedric Prince to unlock some super secret hidden powers, and it turns out to just be a minor boost to a cluster of skills, which doesn't really seem like much. However, obviously for game mechanic purposes, they wouldn't want to make you too overpowered, so I can see why they implemented these effects with the magnitude they did. With that simple book covered, let's move on to something with a bit more variety. Introducing Introducing a black book titled The Winds of Change. This book will eventually make you choose between the following three active effects. Scholar's Insight, Companion's Insight, and Lover's Insight. Scholar's Insight makes reading skill books level up the featured skill by an extra level. Companion's Insight makes your attacks, shouts, and destruction spells do no damage to your followers in combat. And Lover's Insight means you'll do 10% more damage and get 10% better prices from NPCs of the opposite sex. So what do I think of Scholar's Insight? Well, while this might seem like it's not the 
the best effect, and it isn't, it's actually really useful while you're in Apocrypha, so I recommend temporarily picking it while you explore this Daedric Realm in the Dragonborn DLC. There are loads of skill books in Apocrypha, so being able to get two skill points instead of one actually pays off quite a bit. Companion's Insight is a good choice if you always use a companion, and also if you happen to spray around your spells, shouts, and other attacks a little carelessly. Personally, I never find that I hit my companion too much, so this power doesn't really do it for me. I would rank it lowest on the priority list for these effects, simply because I don't always have a companion, and when I do, I tend to make sure I don't hurt them. Then again, it could still be the right choice for you if you always find your buddy getting in the way. I think Scholar's Insight would have to come in second place simply because it helps you level faster. But again, if you use companions all the time, you will probably benefit more from the companion-based effect. This all said, I actually prefer Lover's Insight the most, and would rank it as the best effect you can choose from this specific black book. Doing 10% more damage against the opposite sex is great, especially if you're playing as a female, as there appears to be twice as many male enemies as female ones. That said, even if you are playing as a man, doing 10% more damage against females is still really useful because you encounter them as opponents often enough. For example, while male bandits seem to spawn twice as often as female bandits, you still will find yourself coming up against enough females to make the effect worth it. Plus, there's plenty of female and male vendors who you trade goods with, so there's still that 10% better price bonus there too. This one really reminds me of the perks in Fallout games like Black Widow. Anyways, to sum this book up, while Lover's Insight is nothing groundbreaking, I still think it's the best option out of the three effects here, regardless of whether you're playing as a male or a female. And lucky last, we've got Untold Legends, a black book which contains some of the fruitiest powers obtainable in the entire game. There's Black Market, which is a power that summons a Dramora merchant to trade with you. There's Secret Servant, which can be used to summon a Dramora butler to carry your items. And finally, there's Bardic Knowledge, which summons a spectral drum that follows you around playing a beat, increasing the stamina regeneration of your allies and importantly, yourself. All of these powers can be used an unlimited amount of times per day due to the fact that they are lesser powers. With that explained, let's break them down. We'll start off with the one that I think is the least useful one, but it definitely has some extra dope applications. Secret Servant. This summons a Dramora Butler from the Plains of Oblivion. Just like a companion, he can carry items for you with a carry weight of 248. I rank this as the worst power from this book because it's literally just like a follower who won't fight for you. All he does is carry your stuff. The other reason I rank it badly is because it's worse than the other powers, which I'll soon explain. One use for the Dramora Butler is to carry extra loot if you're over encumbered but still want to sell it later. My problem with this is that you may as well choose the Dramora Merchant power and just sell him your goods straight away. You can just cut out the middleman, so I see no reason to choose the butler instead. One cool thing about the butler, however, which is an extremely niche use, is that you can use him to get your items into a restricted area. We'll probably make a jailbreaker build out of this power. For example, say you get arrested, you're stripped of all of your gear, but wait. You had a plan. You gave all of your gear to the Dramora Butler before going to jail, and now you're going to summon him into your cell, get unexplainably geared up, and smash your way out of prison like a true escape artist master. You could also use him when you go to the Thalmor Embassy, and even in the Sydna Mine Quest. Now, I actually rate the Black Market power as the best from this tome, which means Bardic Knowledge is in the middle. It's not purely that Bardic Knowledge is better than the Butler, it's also because unless you're breaking out of jails, there's hardly a reason to pick the butler over the merchant. If you're over encumbered entirely from stuff that you want to keep and can't sell anything to the merchant, you might be a virtual hoarder. But anyways, what does bardic knowledge do? Well, it summons a floating spectral drum which emits musical notes and follows you around. It looks super nice and we use it on our bard build which I definitely recommend checking out. It fortifies your stamina regen by 50% for 300 seconds, also affecting all allies in a 250 foot radius. This makes it perfect for characters who use companions and also tend to enjoy power attacks. Even without a companion, I'd still prefer to have 50% more stamina regen than a Dramora Butler. And because you can use the power multiple times a day, it can essentially be considered a permanent bonus if you just want to use it all the time. So as far as stats go, this is the best power from this book. However, I prefer the Dramora Merchant as my personal best power from this tome, simply because A, it's highly useful, and B, an additional 50% more stamina regen is never going to be a make 
or break part of any stamina intensive build that I create. One great use I will mention is that vampire builds can use it to help fix the lack of stamina regen which occurs when they're in sunlight. But let's talk about the black market power. The Dramora merchant that you can summon by using this power is not only really cool but also very handy. So a Dramora merchant appears offering to trade just like a regular merchant. You can sell him anything which is another bonus and he sells a variety of weapons and armor. In fact once you reach level 48 he actually stocks Daedric weapons and armor giving you a good way to get Daedric gear without having to smith it yourself. He also usually has 2000 gold to trade so whenever you have heaps of loot especially if it made you over encumbered simply summon him and sell it as soon as you want. No need to fast travel, no need to go to different shops to sell different things. So not only can he help you if you've got too many items just like the butler can but he'll save you from going shopping so often because you can sell directly to him. It's a very simple power but a super convenient one. Again from a combat perspective obviously Bardic Knowledge is the best here as it's the only one relating to combat but my preference is heavily towards selling my loot to the merchant with utmost ease. Also if you don't speak to him within 15 seconds he'll disappear. So let me know in the comments if you'd love a video where I give my top 5 powers and effects that you can get from all of the black books which might have multiple powers from the same book if that's how the cookie crumbles. It would literally be the ones that I find the absolute best regardless of category or what book they're in. But with that said it's time for me to say goodbye and to give you massive thanks for watching the whole video in its entirety. I really hope you learned something new and that I was able to help you by creating this guide. Links to Fudge Muppets social media pages can be found in the description below and if you want to donate to us on Patreon to support the channel and the content we make or follow us on Twitch those links are there in the description too. Thanks again for supporting our Elder Scrolls and Fallout channel. My name is Michael and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.